We have places that are in drought in the state, an incipient drought, but back in October it was anything but. And here in Sumter, which kind of was part of the central of the the center of the of the horror, um, we had just huge amounts of rains, and our farmers had. I mean, the crop was just dev left in the field. Their equipment was even left in the field. Um, it was a horrendous situation, and, and um, they were just left standing there with almost nothing to do to help them. But through a lot of agencies in South Carolina, including Clips and Extension, and um, our legislature and our Department of Agriculture and Farm Bureau, I, th I think some progress has been made. And so, Tom, tell us what is out there that may help our farmers now. Well, we've uh, been working with a lot of people, and like you said, Farm Aid has been going on or has pushed through, and we want to thank uh, Chairman Brian White of, yes. of our Ways and Means Committee for coming up with the idea and working with Hugh Weathers, uh, who has championed the idea of the Farm Aid Pack. But I've got to first say thank you to uh, Kathy Coleman, uh, Nathan Smith, and Scott Mickey, they are the ones that work directly with the South Carolina Department of Agriculture and, and these are Clemson, lately. These are Clemson our Clemson, Clemson agribusiness mm -hmm. team and they've done, they've been working around the clock along with our county agents. Our county agents were out there from day one uh, when the flood happened. And this is a historical flood uh, that some people call it a thousand year flood, but it's, 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 it was worse than that. It, it was just all the forces came together and it was like a siphon that sucked water all the way up into Columbia and it devastated agriculture. And you know, Amanda, agriculture is our number one yes, uh, industry in South Carolina. And so for, after the flood was over with, uh, the morale of our farmers were in the tank and uh, they didn't think anybody was going to come and help them out. And so uh, uh, Clemson and Farm Bureau And one and thing Department I was going to say, um, although we had public utilities and places to help repair roads, farmers have roads on their property and they were completely responsible for those themselves. Exactly right. All their field roads and getting the crops in and out of the field and, and stuff, they were they were washed out, coverts were washed out, NRCS has nope, been on yeah. the ground. And so this has been, one thing I will say, This the flood did one great thing and it pulled the entire agriculture community together with our lenders, with our educators, with the Department of Agriculture, Farm Bureau, uh, Ag First, Ag South, uh, First Citizens, uh, Arbor One, we all are working together to make sure that our number one industry in South Carolina stays afloat and our farmers are very appreciative of what we're doing. Well, I know that in our office, Scott Mickey, who is based in Sumter, has been going around. We've had meetings with the farmers. So what are the farmers doing at this point to try to tap into some of this aid and how much is it going to be able to help them, Tom? Well, the, the aid process goes through. Applications must be done by August 15th. Uh, Scott Mickey, I've had a meeting with him this afternoon and when we went through a lot of this stuff. I've been meeting with Nathan and, and all to make sure. Our extension agents have got worked really hard to make sure the word gets out to our farmers and how to apply and get that application into the Department of Agriculture. Of course, the Department of Agriculture is set up with our Department of Revenue to make sure that the applications are processed in a, a timely manner. I think the commissioner wants to try to get funding to the farmers as soon as possible. The commissioner has given Martin Eubanks, the deputy uh, commissioner of agriculture, a mandate. As soon as the deadline is, is over with, we will process those applications and notify the farmers where we can get the aid to. And, and it's very important that the farmers fill out this. They got to prove. They just, it's not a giveaway. They got to prove that they had damage. They got to prove that their crops were in the ground and was devastated by the flood. Uh, but this is an opportunity for the farmers. And, and Amanda, I want to, to take away a lot of things. This will not bring the farmers back to, to the crop if they could have harvested the crop. No. There's no way that we can repay them, but this will help them get another crop in the ground and start the healing process and start making it easier for them uh, to get through it. Well, everybody talks about crop insurance and they think, oh, well, you know, so-and-so got a new car, da-da-da. I don't think that's how crop insurance works. It's a complicated process, isn't it? And, and it doesn't cover nearly. Well, the crop insurance is, this is the first year of the farm bill. And if you remember the last time we I was on there, we was new... talking about the farm yeah. bill. And the farm bill switched over to crop insurance this year. So our farmers are, were just now learning about the crop insurance. And crop insurance is just like any other type of insurance. It does not nearly cover what you would lose if you, if you need to to call in on the crop insurance, especially when you have something as devastating as a flood. And so people need to understand, and this is one of the things that's the most 
the greatest misconception. They think that our farmers had insurance that covered 100% of their that's loss, and that is not true. And so the crop insurance, people that sell crop insurance have been working hand in hand with Scott and Nathan and uh, Martin Eubanks and Farm Bureau to educate them as well and to educate our legislators. And our, educa our legislators got educated on crop insurance. That's why they passed this bill for farm aid for our farmers. They understand that this did not nearly cover what needed to be covered through uh, the, the farmers lost during this devastation. And although we are grateful to the legislature, we have limited resources in South Carolina. We know there's a cap on what everybody can receive. Right. This is not just an open giveaway. This is a, a limited um, proposal that's going to help our farmers. Hopefully, as you said, you're a sixth generation farmer. Help some of these farmers keep their family farms and it's just, and it's going to do that. It's going to help them keep these farms. And that's exactly right. One of the things that you got to realize is the cap that they put on it and, and it's just going to help them as a band-aid, but, but Amanda, the biggest thing that's helping our farmers is not necessarily the farm aid, it's the fact that South Carolina legislators and, and the Department of Ag and Farm Bureau and all of us came together to help them. And this has given them a great morale boost. They actually realize that we do care about the South Carolina farmers. They actually realize that they have a place and in our legislature, this was, this was groundbreaking legislation. Never before in our history has anything been passed to help the farmers uh, by itself. And so this was, and so I think it's gonna do a, a lot of good on the morale side for our farmers to keep them out there into the farming industry. Well, and I know as somebody who lives in the state, I think all of us, I mean, I don't want this, the landscape of our state to change anymore. It's beautiful the way it is, and and the farms and the and the forest, which are part of agriculture, too. So it thank is. you, Tom, for what well, you're doing. Well, thank you, and I want to say thank you to all the county agents that's, that's worked night and day to make this happen. It, if it wasn't for our hardworking county agents, um, there's no way, you know, I get all the accolades and that, but... The, the truth of the matter, you got Hannah Michael out there that's working night and day. You got Tony, you got a lot of people that have worked night and day to make this happen. And so I'm so proud to call myself director of the Extension Service because of these county agents. They well, and great. I'm going to give us just a minute because if people want to learn more about what extension agents do, they can come to the state fair and learn there too, can't they? That's exactly right, Amanda. You are helping with the state fair, the South Carolina State Fair is just right around the corner. Uh, we're going to have an the expert there. We're going to have cooking demonstrations that Dr. Northcutt and Dr. Parisi are doing. Uh, the extension service is going to be well. 4-H uh, is going to celebrate a big thing at, at our South Carolina and State Fair. And I think fair. there'll be some cows. And there'll be a <laughs> lot of cows there. I can promise you on that. Thank you so much, Tom.